Hey y'all, it's Molly with Mini Acres and I have a variety of things I wanted to share with y'all today. So it's December here in Northwest Florida, zone 8A, 8B-ish, and we've had a couple of nights of a hard freeze and now it's sort of mild again. Um, but I wanted to show you the things that didn't survive the freeze, the things that actually did survive, and how things are looking that I recently planted. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about death on the farm and a lot of things that I'm thinking of and wanted to share and just connections that I've made. And I just really wanted to share with y'all like my experiences. So this is like real life. This is what I've, I'm, I'm going through, what I'm feeling about it, the realities of life on a farm. But I really just wanted to let you guys know what's going on right now. So here we go. Here are the milkweed plants. After two nights of freezing temperatures, they are mush. Let's look at some of the victims of our first frost. So December 1st and 2nd here in Florida, we had our first freeze both nights were 28 and 25 degrees. This was, um, this was without having any nights in the 30s. Up, at this, up until this point, it had only been in the 40s at night. So this was a pretty big shock to the garden. So here are my okra. They are very dead. You can see some of the beans. They didn't make it. Some of the pods that I left on are definitely mushy. There was a major accident with my mini greenhouse project and I just sort of gave up. But I see seedlings in there that are healthy. So I think I want to try to pull out what I can that looks healthy and transplant it. The mulberry trees have died back. Basil, this is holy basil. Yesterday it was mushy, today it's just crunchy. All of these basil, they are completely dead. The weeds are happy, what's that about? What I left of the roselle, definitely black and mushy. Let's see, yeah, this feels kinda kind of gross. I'm not sure if I'll still be able to save these seeds. I did go ahead and cut a couple of branches off and bring them in so hopefully I can get some seeds. Brand new marigolds that were looking so good are mush. A bunch of zinnia seeds that hopefully I can collect now if they uh, dry out a little more. These were all really pretty a couple of days ago and now everybody is dead. I don't know how well you can see the peach trees. They're looking sad. They actually had started to put on some blooms, which is a constant problem in Florida for trees and bushes to bloom because our winters are so mild and then all of a sudden we'll have a frost and it kills whatever was blooming. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see the, that it had a bloom? Oh, I just realized. <laughs> I'm walking around with eggs in my pocket. Look at this goose egg. Marie has laid her second egg, and I am really surprised because I thought the geese were supposed to lay their eggs in the spring. But again, it's been so warm, except for the last two nights, that maybe she got confused. This thing is hefty. I don't know how cold it got in the greenhouse. It's already up to almost 80 now in the middle of the day. But this Malabar spinach looks sad. And my tomato that was looking really good definitely got damaged. Can you see the little tiny? These are the little sweet pea currant tomatoes. And a couple of pepper plants are looking sad. And I'm not sure if it's because they were so close to the windows and the cold air was coming in more. Being so close to the window and maybe I should have pulled them further into the middle of the greenhouse. But the uh, sun comes in right here so this is where they get the most sun that holy basil bit the dust and these little peppers i don't even remember what kind these were they look bad kitty 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 hi sweet pea okay are you jealous please don't lick my camera Hey, you can't have the eggs in my pocket. I've got some little carrot seedlings trying to come up. 
Not sure if they're gonna make it. And then more radishes. The lettuces have grown quite a bit since I was last in here. I've got some little turnip sprouts. A giant fresh stinkhorn mushroom. The lettuce is growing up pretty nicely. This is an arugula that lasted through the summer and it's growing up pretty big. Garlic is doing really well. I had just used some grass clippings as mulch. Got all these little seedlings coming up. Got some more little cabbages, radicchio, kohlrabi rutabaga so hopefully these guys are going to do well they seem to have done really fine through the frost this frost cover seemed to have been enough to protect them and we're not going to get much more freezing weather anytime soon i think there's a couple of nights it's going to get down to 32 which is uh, zero celsius but um other than that i think our weather's going to be pretty mild for at least the next few weeks i really wasn't sure when or if i was going to share the space in my garden that is where we have pets that have passed away and where my dad's ashes are buried um but if you've followed my channel for long you know that our daughter died and this is part of our life and although it's uncomfortable it's incredibly uncomfortable for other people we have a lot of relationships that have changed a lot of people have gone away because they can't handle it and so it makes me apprehensive to talk about it a lot on here even though i have a channel where i have talked about grief and a lot of topics about grief this channel i really wasn't sure how much i wanted to pull that in but i can't avoid it because it's part of it's part of our life so I mentioned a few of our animals that are buried over there that have passed away recently. I'm going to put some pictures up so you can see the animals I'm talking about because they either passed away before I started this channel or I just hadn't gotten around to sharing them. So Delilah is one of our dogs that passed away. She developed a condition. She basically suddenly became paralyzed and I can't remember the name of it. I'll put it on the screen. but. Basically, she lost the use of her back legs and we really, you know, we didn't want to immediately make the decision to euthanize her um, because, because she was part of Cassie and um, the animals that we have that belong to her or that were connected to her every time one of those animals dies, it's like losing another connection. So, that was another reason I hadn't shared her with y'all. And, um, because it's just really hard to talk about. And a few of our cats are elderly. Uh, Spider-Man, actually, the white cat. I think he was in a couple of videos. Um, he passed away. I hadn't mentioned before my dad's cat, Sophie. Um, I'll share a picture of her. <laughs> As I'm talking, there are cats coming in the greenhouse with me right now. Oh. Her name is Lucifer, if you can imagine why. Lucy. Okay. Stop! Um. Now she's guarding the door. She won't let the other animals in. Anyway, so as I mentioned, Sophie was my dad's cat that he rescued as a baby and when he passed away, he died suddenly and unexpectedly nine months before my daughter died and I inherited his cat because uh, one thing that my parents had in common, although they got divorced when I was a baby, is that they both um, are major cat people. And so it's in my blood to have cats. It's not my fault. So we buried her next to my dad's ashes and like I said, there's other animals buried over there and the death that I specifically intended to share today was my male turkey. My turkeys and geese and ducks and some of my, and some of my chickens are only seven months old and it was very unexpected. I, he was fine and I went to, um, feed them in the morning and let them out and when I opened the coop he was on the floor and he was he had died um, he was still warm 
and it just looked like he had hopped down off of his roost and just and died and everything that I've looked at said that it's very common in turkeys to just die that that they you know are actually pretty fragile we had done a lot more to prepare for turkeys this time around whereas the last time my other turkeys had been free range and so they were um, more inclined to predator attack but we were trying to be more careful this time but on a farm death is part of life whether it's harvesting animals or just having animals in general because most of the animals don't have long life expectancies. So some people ask why would I have all of these animals if experiencing death over and over again just keeps hurting so much. And I get that. I get that I could protect myself. I could insulate myself from those feelings. I could insulate myself from this pain by just not having any pets, right? Just not having any animals because if I don't have any animals to get attached to, then there won't be anybody to die and I won't have to be sad. I also know part of the reason that I have all these animals, very specifically when I got the bunnies that live in the house, I knew, I know that getting them has to do with filling a void the day-to-day -day of taking care of my little girl, there was a huge void there. Not having all of the things to do every day that I would do to care for her, uh, I just, you know, I, I, I felt completely lost. And having something that needed my care, a reason to get out of bed, honestly, has helped me. It still helps me. Because I know that these animals are depending on me to feed them and water them and make sure they are, you know, have a clean and safe environment. And that is the thing because it's day after day. It doesn't end, right? Every single day you have to do the same chores over and over again. And so the routine of that and the, the necessity of it, those activities are the things that have kept me going all of this time every day. Otherwise, I wouldn't get out of bed. So while I know that when an animal dies, it's going to be incredibly painful, I can't not have animals. When it comes to farm animals, I could just be detached, right? I could just feed them and water them and not spend time with them or um, groom them to become pets. I could make that choice, right? But that's not in my nature. And if you've ever really spent time with any of your animals, you know horses and, you know, cats and dogs, they're animals that you know have personality, have emotions, and get attached to you. Well, it's that way with a lot of other animals, too. And it's just, it's so, it's unique and it's special. And I just, I can't give it up even though I know that they're going to die. It's just when it's unexpected that it's really hard. I didn't finish talking about Delilah. Okay, Delilah was a black lab. She was diagnosed with whatever that word is that I was talking about. And we didn't want to euthanize her because of her being part of our daughter. And we were able to keep her comfortable. So the decision to not euthanize her had to do with her quality of life. So long as her quality of life was good and we were able to make her comfortable, then we were like given the green light to just keep going. And so I would move her every day. She liked to be with me. Actually, she would, in the early months, she would drag herself through the house to be with me. So I just got into the habit of ba basically making her a pallet in the floor when I was working and moving her around the house. And she lived for nine months and the prognosis is like nine months to three years. And she was already old, so it was pretty impressive that she lived as long as she did. I seem to have forgotten my point. But another thing that I wanted to say too is that currently we don't harvest any animals on our farm. We have in the past. My husband is a hunter and um, that's just, you know, part of our lifestyle. And right now, and I hope eventually it'll change, um, and I know that if it were a necessity we would do it, but the way that our daughter died and 
the trauma of it. We can't physically dispatch of an animal, however humanely. It's just not something that we're emotionally capable of doing right now. And um, hopefully anyone that does harvest your own animals, you do it in a way that you are appreciating the life that that animal is sacrificing for you. Because that's part of this whole homesteading movement as well is to treat animals humanely. Because the way that things are now with factory processed animals, we know that animals are are in inhumane conditions and that if you buy chicken at Walmart or you buy milk at Walmart you're you're supporting chickens and cows being treated inhumanely but if you are taking care of your own chickens and your own cow you know that you can treat them humanely and give them a good life so we do have this goal that is still our ultimate goal is to be able to provide for ourselves in those ways but just right now it's it's enough that the, the unexpected and the unplanned deaths on our farm are more than we can handle. So, so I'm not really sure what I wanted to say about that exactly, except that except that you won't be seeing Abraham anymore in the videos. Um, he really hadn't made it into a lot of videos, but he had so much personality and if you've ever raised turkeys you know they're so curious and he was very loving he um he was very attached to me because i made him that way i mean i had been babying him since i had you know since i got him at a day old and so it's it's hard even though he was only here for seven months it's hard to it's hard to deal with him being gone Sarah doesn't seem to be that bothered by it. I think the ducks are more bothered by it because he was their bodyguard. They were all bonded. Um, I'm really sad about the future. Our intentions were to be able to breed them and um, potentially harvest, you know, those turkeys. Um, but we are actually going to try to incubate one egg. We have one egg from her that is possibly fertilized. And so I'm hoping to be able to share that. I'm hoping it works out. Just, you know, it would be great if that would work out. And, um, I don't know, just to, just to see if we can. So, I hate ending the video on such a sad note, but that's where we are. You know, and that's part of how it is on a farm and on a homestead. It's the reality of it, and it, it is tough, but I absolutely think it's worth it. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to share with you guys today. Um, I appreciate you. I appreciate all the friends that I've been making in this community. Everyone is so supportive and so loving and kind, and um, I am making connections with people that I have so much in common with that we otherwise wouldn't have, have found each other, and um, so I'm really appreciative for that. And... Um, yeah, I'll see you guys next time, okay? Bye.